A meteorite passes through a satellite and then enters the Earth. Oh my god, this camera movement is so cool. It must have been shot with a drone, right? Damn, it's so cool. And this shot drilling into the Antarctic continent, you could never shoot from this angle in reality. But what if I told you that all of this was generated by AI without a single real shot? Would you believe it? The production budget for this film exceeded 1 million, making it the world's most expensive, purely AI-branded film. Times have really changed and I happen to know the director of this blockbuster. I also interviewed the director himself, so today I will exclusively reveal for you how this million dollar AI blockbuster was made. Next, I will bring you six core secrets and include a super hardcore tutorial to help you completely understand AI video creation in 2025. We have preserved the director's entire creative process. Click the link in the comment section to enter the professional AI video tool. Tab now. Get a glimpse of the creative process and see the behind the scenes reveal. Are you ready? Let's begin. From the very beginning, this film used the most professional live-action workflow to guide the AI. To make the AI forced Antarctica realistic enough, the team did a huge amount of research. They would research the real Antarctic landscape, weather, and plan detailed travel routes. And the one leading all of this is the film's director, Hu Yang, a well-known advertising director from Shenzhen who has had in-depth collaborations with many big brands like Huawei, DJI, and Tamal. Our imagination of Antarctica is not baseless. It must be based on facts, including their roots and the equipment they carry. The texture of the character's skin from the landing of the research vessel to even the model of the helicopter used, everything strives for authenticity. For example, the skin of the research team in Antarctica is more likely to be sunburned than frostbitten. Details like these were meticulously recreated. In the storyboarding stage, they would even use AI to first generate hand-drawn style scripts. I was very curious and asked Wu Young, since AI can generate realistic storyboards, why bother with a hand-drawn style? Wu Young told me that the hand-drawn style leaves more room for later iterations, avoiding locking in the visuals too early. It can be said that in the stages of research, storyboarding, and director's script, AI was already deeply integrated into their workflow. After completing the detailed pre-production, they entered the most expensive and core mid-production stage. The core team for this film was actually just two people, a director and an AIGC artist. Although the team was small, it doesn't mean the workload was light. This film took three months and the team tested almost all mainstream AI models on the market. During this process, to what extent did you have to re-roll? Oh, we probably re-rolled tens of thousands of times. In every part, a single folder contains several hundred pieces of material. If you count the images, it's a massive amount. I can only describe it as massive. If you count the images... The million dollar production is reflected in these unseen huge costs. AI video creation has always had a huge pain point, which is the consistency of characters and scenes. This problem also troubled Ouyang's team for a very long time. At first, they could only solve it through massive re-rolls and manual photoshopping. But dramatically, halfway through their project, a turning point appeared. I guess you could say I was one of the first users of TabNow after its public beta. My own experience with it was absolutely stunning, so I did a lot of experimenting with it later on. For example, using TabNow to create the kind of renderings you'd see in a traditional film production workflow. It's so much more efficient than the old way, where I'd have to go through the whole art department process using 3D Max or SketchUp. And the quality is much better too, because the images it produces are incredibly close to real life scenes. Since the main shot was a climbing scene, you have to maintain consistency. The environment, the characters, the clothing, and even the details on the shoes all had to be consistent. When it comes out, damn, it's just, it's like a high. So sometimes I can't help but marvel at how fast AI is developing. You're in the middle of a project and a new model gets released. Some of the old work, you might just have to scrap it and start over. Once the basic visual problems were solved, the director's creative ambition started to get more and more excessive, or you could even say bold. Gradually, you're no longer satisfied with conventional camera movements. You start wanting FPV shots. The demands get more and more extreme because some of the requests were pretty outrageous. Like, what were some of the most outrageous examples? So, what was the first idea for an FPV shot? It was to fly through an ice cave, a crevasse. I saw this 3D asset and I said, can we fly through our ice crevasse? And then we tried it and it worked. The visual expectations were high. Later, things got even wilder, including a shot flying through a meteor shower, past the satellite, into the atmosphere, through clouds, then combining with an FPV shot all the way to Antarctica. The final result was mind-blowing. It ties into our film's title, Exploring the Extremes. And I wrote a line in there that says, this is also the extreme frontier of AI visual exploration. It's precisely this creative spirit of constantly challenging the limits of AI that ultimately gave birth to the amazing shots we see.
In the past, to shoot in Antarctica, you'd have to fly an entire professional crew to the other side of the planet. In today's advertising climate, that's almost impossible. Last year, a similar commercial with an Antarctic theme, thanks to the cold, was shot in a studio and used post-production compositing. The production cost was still very high, around 3 to 5 million RMB. But more importantly, the final result wasn't even as good as what was generated by AI this time. In the past, creating this would require CG costing at least tens of thousands of dollars. But now it's just a matter of writing a prompt. AI has another superpower. We can go back to the set for a reshoot at any time. In the past, once a film was shot, it was hard for the client to ask for changes. But with AI, the client can always... So after all that behind the scenes talk, how exactly are these stunning visuals generated from scratch? Well, first we need to understand the main methods of AI video generation. There are two primary approaches, image to video and text to video. Image to video can be further subdivided into first frame generation, first and last frame generation, and reference image generation, among others. And text to video is simply using text to generate a video. It's currently the method that can achieve the highest image quality, but it has two fatal flaws. First, it's expensive. For example, the VO3 model that the team primarily used cost 30 wen to generate an eight second video. To get one good shot, the team often has to generate it thousands of times. The director told me he just topped up a thousand yuan and it could be burned through in just a few hours. Of course, for Ouyang's team, with their million yuan budget, cost isn't the issue. The real fatal flaw is the second one. It's hard to control the consistency of the visuals. So to tame this wild horse of text to video, they found a professional solution. They used a code-like format to communicate with the AI. They used a format called JSON to write their prompts. You can think of it as an extremely detailed parameter sheet for the AI specifying things like lens model, focal length, aperture, color style, and camera movement. Using this method, you can achieve surgical level precision, which ultimately results in top tier image quality. You can try out a JSON workflow in TapNow AI. Even beginners can easily use JSON to generate high quality videos. The AI models on the market today are truly blossoming. As creators, we are both excited and overwhelmed. For this creation, the director's team used almost all the mainstream models available. Let me give you a rundown, and you can take a screenshot to save it. If you want images full of artistic sense and imagination, choose Mid Journey. There's Banana, known as the god of photo editing, and similar to Banana, there's Jimeng 4, which is more friendly to Chinese and Asian users and supports 4K output. Among video models, there's VEO3 for top-tier image quality, Hilu for high-speed motion, and Sora 2 with built-in editing features, perfect for creating memes. Hey, welcome to the Tap now integrates the mainstream AI models above and combines their strengths to preset practical workflows, so even beginners can get started easily without prior experience. AI's impact on film and TV post-production is disruptive. In traditional filmmaking, color grading is a crucial step, but in the AI era, this rule is completely different. With its colors, there's not much room for color grading in the raw output. He gave me a batch of images before and asked if we could do TC in post. I said, don't bother, it's impossible. So we basically finalized the texture at the image stage. Yes, color grading must be done up front. Besides color grading, the dubbing process is also being disrupted by AI. For dubbing, we've gone through several iterations. We'd use AI to create a bass track first, and then later, they would ask directly, is this AI dubbed? When they ask that, they probably can't tell the difference anymore, because even I can't tell the difference. At that time, I was confident enough to say to their faces that a human voice actor might not do a better job than AI. That's because AI dubbing technology has advanced so much that I can adjust the speed, emotion, and rhythm of every sentence, even every word. Finally, for editing and special effects, AI currently can't completely replace professional workflows. However, Tim from Yingxi Jufeng predicted in a previous interview that AI is very likely to replace professional editors in the future. Are you wary of generative AI? Will it soon reach your level, for example, the level of an excellent editor with 10 years of experience? Two years, definitely two years. I think it's a two year window. Once it's gone, it's gone. Recently, I discovered something terrifying. Your hard work, your past efforts, 10 years of effort. In the face of AI, it's just not a match. It's like you have no value. As one of the first directors to create with AI, Ouyang also admits that at first he was very resistant to AI. What is this stuff? When AI first came out, you know, for example, hands with six fingers or the characters were deformed, malformed, either the simulation of the physical world was just ridiculous. I just never expected. The speed of AI's development surpassed everyone's imagination. 
It can replace a person's skills, but it can't replace the editor's mindset or the director's mindset or the cinematographer's mindset. You still need a human to intervene. Let's say one day it can edit really well, but from what perspective does it judge whether something is good or bad? It will still definitely need someone to oversee it. We have to learn to use AI, not let AI use us. It's a technical tool. It's just like going from the film era to the digital era and now to the AI era. I think it's just a means, not an end. That's always been my view, including when I made this film, I wrote it in my director's statement. AI is definitely the trend. It's absolutely the trend. There's no escaping it, but will advertising die out? I don't think it will go that far. Not that far. If AI really gets to that point one day, how should I put it? It's not that it's unrealistic. I just feel a bit uneasy about it. Yeah. So how soon do you think that day will come? Soon. It'll be soon. I think it'll be soon. Beneath the Antarctic ice sheet lie 10,000 year old secrets. And we humans in front of our screens are using AI to once again explore the boundaries of possibility. Just like an Antarctic expedition, every generation is a new departure. The directing team for this Antarctic expedition has publicly shared their entire creative process on the TapDown AI platform, including the complex JS on prompts they used. I've compiled them and put them in a link in the pinned comment. You can even one-click remix their project files and start creating your own AI blockbuster. I'm Lin Sifeng. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, save and follow. We'll see you next time.